stability has returned, is it time to focus on growth? Uh, yes, to some extent, but as I mentioned uh, in our report, uh, the region is very resilient and we expect most economies in the region to be at the mid phase of the business cycle, meaning that they'll be growing around trend, right? So there's really no need for economies to worry too much about growth at this point, except for the long-term growth, the structural. You know. That's why our report also focused on the structural issues to support growth going forward. But for now, in the short term, we expect growth to be around 5.1% for the region as a whole. Uh, this is very close to the trend. Uh, of course, some economies may go into a soft, what we call a soft patch and take some measures to support the economy. But by and large, uh, we don't see the need for major stimulus package. Resilient, but there are risks. Right now, the Fed is pretty dovish, but it could take very little for the Fed to then turn hawkish, which could impact emerging economies, especially those in Southeast Asia. No, absolutely, yes. Uh, but the Fed just came out uh, with a statement today that they need to be patient. <laughs> and if you How look long at the, do you think the Fed will be patient? Uh, we expect them to hold for the rest of the year, you know, because uh, the CPI number, if you remember, no, is uh, the core inflation rate is pretty low, and the economy is pretty strong. So we don't see any, you know, reason for the Fed to uh, raise or move rate at this point in time. Is it fair to say now that the pressure is off? for emerging markets? Uh, for now, yes. Uh, we are worried about that, actually, uh, because if you remember last October, emerging markets came under tremendous pressure. Uh, but since the beginning of the year, that pressure has gone off, and also because the major central bank has moved to a more dovish stance. How much capacity do emerging markets, emerging economies have should a recession strike? Well, there's a, I think our assessment is that there's quite a bit of uh, room for emerging markets. Not across the board though, certain economies, more, more economies, how about Indonesia for instance? Indonesia uh, is, you know, in our assessment, was very forward looking, ahead of the curve, front loading. So our assessment is that actually they have some space, okay, at the moment, right? But of course, if market becomes more turbulent, it's a different matter. Who is at risk? Uh, I, would, I wouldn't say any particular country, but certainly, you know, Indonesia, Philippines, Malaysia, these are the emerging markets. And when, you know, emerging markets are under stress, you know, these are the countries that normally get, come under pressure. What assumptions are you making about the tweaks in the global supply chain, given the US-China trade war? Which countries will benefit more going forward? Well, in the short term, very few. Okay, our estimate is that most countries will be hit, you know, by a, by a significant but small um, uh, margin. Uh, so we expect growth to be lower by about 0.1, 0.2 percentage point across the board. But in the longer term, some countries will benefit. Uh, countries like Vietnam, Malaysia, Thailand, you know, which are manufacturing economies. Let's pick up on Malaysia. We had an interview with Nazir Razak, the former chairman of CIMB. He says that he expects a turnaround in the ringgit, a turnaround in the economy, now that the new government is probably addressing all uh, the key issues facing the country. Your thoughts on that? Do you see that happening? Well, we tend to agree with him, you know. Uh, we know that in the short term, like, you know, the, the last few months, there's been some pressure on Malaysia, you know, numbers are a, a bit soft. But I think these are soft, short -term. Term, you know, on the longer term basis, I think the, the government is doing the right thing. They continue to consolidate the fiscal uh, position, which is very positive for you know um, for the for the markets. And so we expect that in the fundamentals are there, and and our view is that there will be a lot of relocation of investment to Malaysia, uh, and they will benefit from that in the long run.